Welcome back, everybody, to the Omni Stage of Event Tech Live USA Canada 2021 and to our next session on the Omni Stage, Data. Now it's personal. I'm delighted to say that joining Event Tech Live now is the project director at Cheerful 21st, Zachary Tranter. Zachary, welcome to Event Tech Live. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Thanks very well, much for being thank here. Thank you so much. So a bit of a delay on the line, Zachary. I'm going to hand straight over to you to kick off your session, and I'll see you back a little bit later on with some questions. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone, and thank you to Event Tech Live for having me. Welcome to the data age where brands are able to access and interpret information around the clock to define a better user experience. This takes shape in our daily lives, uh, sometimes before you get out of bed in the morning. So data, now it's personal. And the question that I want to pose is this, is the events industry taking these consumer insights and turning them into actionable items? My name is Zachary Tranter, the US Project Director for Cheerful 21st, and I am joining you from Lenape Hoking, the Lenape homeland, which we know as New York City. Cheerful 21st is a brand experience and corporate communications agency that works with some of the world's top brands to create and produce events and experiences. And today I am so pleased to talk with you about using data to personalize the audience journey and improve the event experience. In January, we held our quarterly brand playbook event where we shared our research and our strategic insights into audience engagement with our clients during a, a virtual event. And as part of the event, we are asked our audience a few polling questions. We learned that 80% of our audience indicated they analyzed audience data at least quarterly to inform business communications. But what about events and experiences? Think about the implications. Brands are already collecting data on their market, but it's not necessarily transferring to the experience and the strategy of events and activations. How do we apply this within the event experiences industry? Industries like entertainment and advertising have been using data for years to drive engagement. And to generalize slightly, as an industry, we knew that data was important, but weren't necessarily using the tools we had our, our fingertips to capture useful data. Before our necessary shift to virtual events, Data capture within the event industry was often siloed to registration data and post-event surveys, which, I mean, who are we kidding, really didn't provide much insight, improve the audience experience, or personalize their journeys. Capturing and then using data effectively was um, a bit of a unicorn. But within virtual events, the data is built into our platforms, our analytics, and our journey, which opens up opportunities to leverage the data for our audience's benefits. First, I want to lay out the landscape. What we already knew going into 2020 is that event audiences were looking for more. Even as internet commerce and activity continued and continues to grow, according to PricewaterhouseCoopers, 75% of consumers say that they want more human interaction in the future, not less. Seamless transactions are simply not enough anymore. Audiences are now hungry for personalized experiences and meaningful interactions with brands. As an industry, for a long time, data was the missing piece of our puzzle. Planners faced challenges in justifying the event cost against the impacts on the audience 
themselves. I mean, not even to mention the impact on the return uh, on the original objectives. Enter 2020. Enter new audience needs and new virtual formats. And with them, new opportunities for how we as event professionals use data. A digital world captures and processes data in a way that the physical environment didn't and couldn't. And as planners, we need to close the gap between data and a targeted, personalized experience. Um, go with me on a journey here, picture an iceberg, but just what's uh, above the surface and what I feel is a valid representation of how we as an industry are using data today. We are neglecting data capture, not thinking about it strategically enough. We shake our heads in the post event phase because we do not have the data to justify the impact our events made on the audience. The audience in turn is wanting more, more of what we are seemingly not giving them. The audience is sharing the same linear experience where we can't differentiate individuals or even groups. And the result is fairly surface level engagement with the brand. The guest doesn't feel special. Now, what is there that is below the surface that we aren't seeing or taking advantage of? If we use data to drive an experience and enhance it through meaningful personal interactions, positive associations, and higher audience engagement, we meet the audience's needs in a more optimized way. And I would say that's just the tip of the iceberg, pardon the pun, but this is just one step in the journey to data personalization. And it all begins with consent. Transparency, trust, and data consent are crucial to a positive experience. For some people, sharing their personal data is akin to handing someone their unlocked iPhone and computer password and you know, saying, have fun. Transparency in this matter is our, and should be, our highest priority. There is not one person in this virtual room who has not received a piece of junk mail. Somehow, your name ends up on a mailing list without your informed consent, and you receive solicitations and advertisements that are in no way relevant to you. Whoever you shopped with or whoever you donated to took your address and they sold it. That's not transparent and does not distill trust in consenting to share your data. You may not have realized it, but when you registered for Event Tech Live, the organizers and the producers were very open about using your data to provide you a targeted comms experience. So again, whether you realize it or not, you've been a part of this data journey already. And it's important that your attendees and your audience understands why you're gathering information from them and how it is going to add value to their experience. They need to understand that by providing their data, they are starting um, a relationship with you as an organizer or as a brand on a more personal level. And this is vastly different from blindly accepting cookie consent on a website so you can just get to that article or, or start online shopping or, or whatever you're landing there for. It is a positive, proactive permission that says, yes, dear brand, please use this to improve, to simplify, and to personalize my experience. The relationship we've created sits beyond the data 
and the, the figures that and sits more within the insights that we can draw from them. Insights that unlock a world of personalized communications journeys at scale. For example, the work we are doing at Cheerful 21st with global brands like Google and Vodafone, they take event microsite traffic, analyze activity, and output an experience for the attendees that better match their noted habits. From the first touch point, we are transparent in how we are using the data with purpose and with intention. We don't just want to understand that 300 people attended. We want to use the insights from those 300 individual journeys to build a picture of the audience experience, understanding the pinch points and optimizing them to deliver an enhanced experience the next time. And as planners, what does this design journey look like? Society creates two quintillion bytes of data every single day. That's two with 18 zeros after it. Imagine the power that this information holds. In designing personalized journeys at Cheerful 21st, we look at a circular approach to achieve success. What you see in front of you is uh, not necessarily individual circles, but think of them more as an infinity loop. And as the old proverb goes, a journey starts with a single step. And for Cheerful 21st, this initial step in designing personalized journeys is the strategy. At the core of what we do is strategy. In a world of data, this starts with looking at what metrics are related to the event or business objectives and building our event with purpose and with these metrics in mind. Outline how you plan to achieve these objectives and what quantifiable figures could justify that. We then move into a data capture phase. And in order for there to be personalized outputs, we must capture the data directly from our audience. This fits into that model of designing your journey uh, and your events journey with purpose. Inject this into registration, audience segmentation, or any other touch point throughout the life cycle of the event and leverage this data to find out what information is most useful to our audience and when and or how they would like to receive it. We then move in to our insights analysis and measurements phase, which along the way, what we're doing is capturing data and we have to turn these around into actionable insights by analyzing this data and measuring against our original objectives. This is not a single step in our journey, but one that we must consistently return to time and time again by capturing data basing it on the strategy, analyzing, measuring, and repeating. And finally, this brings us to a personalized communications journey. And quite simply, you take these insights and ensure that the journey for every attendee is optimized for relevance, emotional engagement, and to their liking create profiles, target their interests, and share content all through our various means of communications in a value positive way. A bit of a simplistic a bit of a theoretical example, through registration data, say that we know 25% of our attendees have some accessibility issues that make watching videos without captioning or, or subtitling difficult for them to follow. Instead, instead of sending them a generic link to the virtual event where they'll you know, hunt around to find how to turn on captioning, we can send this group a specific message that links them directly to that journey. The time it takes for them to engage with me as a brand is now just a few clicks shorter. And whether this audience realizes it or not, I've personalized their journey to ensure their experience 
is the best possible. This spring, we created a virtual global conference where attendees from four regions were asked to contribute to the direction of the content and agenda during the early engagement phase. The outcome was regionalized content within a global conference, personalized across local economies to reflect unique audience preferences and the challenges that they were facing in their field. Our innovative approach uh, integrated a virtual collaboration tool into the events platform where engagement data was captured through website traffic and analytics. The attendees were having fun brainstorming and collaborating while a team on the back end was tracking where engagement was the highest to ensure that a member of the content curation team was interjecting to pull more out of their ideas. At the conclusion of these sessions, an agenda was formed by region with all of these ideas integrated, very topical, very collaborative, and hyper personalized. Until now, I've shared some examples and some theoreticals, but why don't we get down to it? I would like to leave you with three tips on how you can take data forward into practice to improve the guest experience. First, design your event and your comms journey, keeping in mind the insights that you need. While we cannot craft exact data points, if you don't design thinking that you need them, they may be lost forever. Understand the overall event purpose at a strategic level and build opportunities for relevant and robust data collection around those key areas. But I urge you not to go overboard. We know that audiences disengage if we're asking for too much data or if they can't see a value return on that data. But by building data into the story from the early planning phases, we can review, develop, and even optimize in real time as necessary. And there is so much value in having visibility of our audience and being responsive to them. Next, we can take inspiration from the Netflix or the Amazon models where predictions based on previous history drive a personalized experience. In segmenting the audience based on insights gathered through deliberate data collection points, we can make informed predictions about what they will connect with. For example, replicating small touches in the live and digital events environment, like suggesting new networking connections or content sessions of interest, uh, allowing us to understand the audience on a, a deeper individual level while predicting their next move can return value directly back to that audience. And tools and technology exist today that already help us to do this at scale. Finally, I have to note that raw data means absolutely nothing. Data doesn't automatically generate value after the final keynote. It's the insights and the assumptions that we pull from that data that have value and have meaning. This is what we turn around into actionable insights. To build out this data, focus on an extended communications journey where your event isn't just a single point in time. We can use insights from the live event to extend and deepen the audience journey and crucially, keep people engaged for the other 365 days of the year. To conclude, using data to inform the event experience allows us to speak directly to our audiences in ways that work for them, providing personalized opportunities to engage on a more human level. If you would like to continue this conversation, I really urge you to connect with me on LinkedIn. 
I would love to chat more about data, data journeys, personalized journeys, personalized communications at scale, anything related, or just catch up. Um, please connect with me on LinkedIn and we'll chat there. And with that, I thank you so much. I believe I have about 10 questions left, or 10 minutes left rather for questions or <laughs> any other comments. Hello, Zachary. Welcome back. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you very much for that session. Um, it's been great having you at Event Tech Live today. Um, apologies for a couple of issues that we had um, in the platform there with our Glissa q and I know that there were people trying to post some questions. Um, I've got some noted down here for you, Zachary, um, that I'd like to go through with you if you do have just a couple of minutes left. Of course. Fantastic. Um, so the first one here, um, it's actually something I'm sure a lot of our audience and, and uh, attendees can relate to. And it's that feeling of being weirded out after searching for something on, on Google or on the internet and then going onto a social media platform or onto Amazon and then seeing adverts for everything popping up. It's all that, that tracking and that use of data to personalize your experience. Um, could it be off-putting to an event attendee if communications become too personal? Could it feel a little bit like Big Brother is watching? Yeah, that is a very good question. Um, uh, I think there's a line, there's a really fine line where you you cross between big brother and adding value. Um, as much as it may annoy you to search something on Google and then see an ad on Instagram or Facebook or whatever social media the next day, occasionally I'm sure that's helpful for you because you were searching for something Google, Amazon, whomever noted, they're interested in this. And Instagram, you know, social media said, okay, here's how I will provide value to you by targeting your experience. But it does become a really fine line. Um, many of the events and, uh, you know, experiences that we handle would never reach the scale of something like Facebook or, or LinkedIn or Instagram where there are hundreds and potentially even thousands of people that work on a team that target these and personalize these experiences. So while yes, I think there's a really fine line between big brother type personalization, if you can demonstrate the value to your audience and you know either toe that line or at least not cross it, uh, they will thank you tenfold. Even if one person's like, well, that's a little big brother, the other you know, 99% <laughs> will uh, thank you tenfold. Absolutely. And, and it's interesting because we went sort of in peaks and troughs with email marketing, didn't we? You know, when, when everyone first got email, it was exciting. It was a new form of communication. They would sign up for things. They would get emails from you know, places that they would shop or, you know, gigs that they would go to or music providers, whoever it was. And of course, we've reached that stage where a lot of people just got fed up with the sheer volume of emails that were coming through to them. And like you said, it's that real fine balance that we have to strike to make sure that we're not doing things to such an extent that actually it puts off our audiences. Right, right. There's a, there's a really great example of this within the consumer world, and that's Spotify. Um, recently, maybe earlier this week, last week, um, Spotify came out with kind of like curate your own little dinner party based off of your top listen to artist. Um, what Spotify's done is take the information of what you listen to on that platform, say, okay, these are your top three, five, whatever it was, artists. Let's have some fun. Let's curate a dinner party. And I think that's so, and then you share it on social media. So then other people mm -hmm. do it and other people are driven to Spotify. So it becomes a commercial thing for them. But the point is that you got fed up with those emails and started unsubscribing just like I did <laughs> because they were yeah. very generic. They were so, you know, that I got the same email that you got, that they got, that everyone got. And it had nothing to do with me. There were clothes that I would never wear, nothing that I've ever looked at or shopped for on that website. And that's annoying. And that's frustrating. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that in your email <laughs> communications because that's what's gonna get people to hit unsubscribe or to turn off entirely. Absolutely. Let's turn to another question if we can, Zachary. Um, 
commenting from somebody, a great presentation, your insights into how we can use data to personalize an event journey were very insightful. Can you give a bit more information on how to return to live in-person events is going to affect data collection and analysis? Yeah, that's a really, really good question. In the virtual world, I had mentioned this, the data is there. We know we can grab website traffic information. We can tell what things or links people clicked on and how long they dwelled on it. When we move into the real world, you know, the in-person world, or when we start to move back into that, we have to pay more attention to craft these journeys because the data isn't necessarily innate. It's not there. So I would turn to technology and um, light tracking technology, such as RFID or near, near field communications, which help us to understand the behavior of people. So um, for example, at Triple 21st, we um, early 2020, before the world shut down, we did a um, law firm's global partner conference. And we utilized RFID to personalize the journey, the individual journey of each of these attendees. So they were, you know, going around using their little badge that had an RFID or Neo Field Communications uh, uh, communicator, and tapping into breakout sessions, tapping on in the expo and in the innovations area to receive more information. So to them, it wasn't very Big Brother because they were seeing value. You know, tapping into breakout sessions, they're either getting their credit you know, showing that they are attending or, you know, receiving the details after that session. Um, but tapping around, you know, we were essentially heat mapping and tracking where people were going, what they were engaging with. And they had maybe some of them, but most of them had no idea that we were doing that. We weren't trying to be big brother. I'm not trying to look at where people are going. What I'm trying to do is understand what they engaged with so I can do more of that the next year. Um, all that to say that, of course, use technology as your friend, modern technology as we return to live, um, because otherwise you're, we're going to struggle and we're going to end back up in the 2019, 2018 era <laughs> where we're not doing it right. <laughs> Absolutely. I've seen some great examples of, you know, tracking technology in live events that allow you to sort of replicate a lot of the the, the key features and analytics that you would look for if, if you're looking at web analytics. So things like dwell times, you know, simple things like page visits. There are now elements of tech that you can deploy in a live event space to actually see where the pinch points were, how people are moving around a certain area. And you can draw parallels then with a lot of the web analytics that um, that we many of us are already familiar with. We've got time for just one more question, uh, please, Zachary, before we wrap up. Um, and it relates to event registration. Um, the question is event registration tends to ask for lots of data all in one go. Could the registration process be adapted so that smaller bits of info are captured over a longer period of time, particularly with virtual events in mind? Yeah, um, that is a fantastic thought. And it takes craft to apply that well. Um, and I would venture or I'd ask you to look into yourself. How many times have you gone back to a registration page warranted or you know, asked to do so or not asked to do so to input more information. Um, you would have to balance the way between, you know, how long is it gonna take someone to fill out this registration page versus how annoyed are they gonna be if they have to go back in. But in the going back in, if they see value because it will personalize their experience, it will create, you know, a, a better uh, journey for them, they'll do it you know, most of them will do it because that's what they want out of, they're going to your event or your experience to get that. I mean, we did that in Event Tech Live. You published the agenda a couple of weeks ago and we were able to go in and select what we'd like to do. I didn't do that the first time I registered, but I was interested in seeing what was happening over these three days and selecting it. So that provided value to me because now it's, you know, calendar invite right in my inbox. I got an email right before each session and I showed up on time and ready to see the session. Uh, did everyone do that? Perhaps not, but did the majority? I would say yes. So it's that fine line. You, you need to understand how long 
that you provide that value to someone and they will do it. Otherwise you're just, you know, creating work for work's sake. Absolutely. Zachary, we've reached the end of time on today's session, but it's been fantastic uh, to have you here today and a really insightful thought process into that whole world of data. Um, a lot of good comments coming in from your session today. It's been great to have you at Event Tech Live. Zachary Tranter, Project Director at Cheerful 21st, has joined Event Tech Live. Zachary, we hope to see you again soon. Thank you for being here. Thank you.